Hi Year One families, I'm Mrs Neville and over the next few minutes in this video I'm going to introduce you to life in Year One and um, talk to you about some of our routines, uh, tell you a little bit about how we learn in Year One and the sorts of things we're going to be learning about. Um, so I'm going to share with you a PowerPoint presentation that's got lots of photos in it, hopefully then while I'm talking it will give you a nice flavour um, of sort of what life is like in Year One. Um, but before I start I just want to say thank you ever so much for your support over the last few days um, with helping to make the start of term a really a really happy one for the children. Uh, they've all come in and, and really impressed me with um, how, how easily they've taken to all the new routines obviously very different from when they were in year R and they've already um, kind of taken it all in their stride and seem to be coming in with big smiles on their faces and really happy so we've all had a, a great start to the term so thank you very much for your support with that. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you now so just bear with me for a second um, and let's have a look. I'm going to uh, just find the PowerPoint presentation to show you and I'll just pop it on slideshow and then you'll be able to see it nice and big, hopefully. Uh, there we go. So, um, yeah, so as I said, I'm just gonna um, hopefully uh, run through some of the important information that you'll need to know um, as your child starts year one and the sorts of things to, to expect um, as we go through. So, um, as I said, I've been very impressed with the children coming into school in the morning. I know I've been out on the playground a little bit and I, I've seen a few of you out there. It's been nice to meet you and hope to meet the rest of you over the coming weeks. Um, but yes, it must feel a little bit strange leaving your child as they come down to their new class, uh, leaving them at, at the top of the ramp on the playground. Um, but yes, the, the children have done a great job of walking down the ramp. Uh, they go round the corner past their year our classroom door through our outside area, which I'll talk a bit more about later and in through our um, door towards our cloakroom area and as I say I'm so impressed with how the children have done that so sensibly um, they just sort of walk down happily together and round and get to where they need to be so that's the sort of the um, start of day routine shall we say arriving at school. And when they come into the school building, um, this is the cloakroom area. So our cloakroom area is outside our classroom and our coat pegs are there in alphabetical order. So the children already all know where their pegs are. And as you can see, we, we keep our PE um, kits and obviously coats and, and, and things on our pegs. Lunch boxes, if the children have them, just sit um, on the bench just underneath the pegs there. So uh, their first job when they come in in the morning is to put their belongings where they need to be. So they, they stack everything up on their pegs. Um, they also then put their book bags and fruit snacks away. And can I say a, a thank you again uh, for making sure that your child has one of our JYS book bags with them. Um, it means that we are able to keep our cloakroom area really nice and tidy because the book bags fit nicely inside these boxes um, and then we can slot them away during the day when they're not in use and it keeps the cloakroom really nice and tidy and um, as other classes are walking past as well um, it means there aren't any trip hazards that we used to have with the big some of the big rucksacks and so on so thanks again for um, making sure your child ha has the right equipment for that um, and then the green box on top um, of the, the unit here you can see that's where the children put their fruit snacks if they have some that they're bringing in from home um, obviously we have free fruit in key stage one as well so we have a fruit snack available for children each day if they would like it from school um, but also if they would like to bring one from home as you know um, that that's great um, very much encouraged um, so as you can see there are the color boxes and your child should have brought home already their show and tell rotor which tells you what color group they're in um, and really the purpose of that color group is just to help them organize themselves um, in the morning so the, um, they might come home and say I'm in purple group and that really means that they put their book bag in the purple box so they know where to find it and we know where to find it later um, and then when they come into the classroom it's also where they put their water bottles I'll show you that in just a second um, so yeah uh, we've got our six color groupings this year and your child will be in one of them so yes um, before they come into the classroom uh, one of the very important jobs obviously still is washing hands and obviously they may need to go to the toilet at that point as well um, we've got two toilets and two sinks and they are just across the corridor from our year one classroom so the children obviously can ask at any point during the day
day should they need to go to the toilet um, and they are allowed to go across and, and use the toilets but they are sort of just outside our classroom unlike in year R where they were very close to where the children ch children were during the day um, but yes yeah, so here's the toilets I said the ch to the children that I was going to put a photo of this on the presentation that made them all laugh so um, if they're watching this with you hope they're enjoying it um, and then yes when the children come into the classroom they're putting their water bottles into their um, colour group um, box again and as I mentioned earlier the other um, important reason for being in a colour group is their show and tell uh, um, slot which as I say um, that happens when you do it on a group by group basis um, and as I put in the letter there's no expectation that every child would want to join in um, and certainly not going to make anybody stand up at the front and talk if they don't want to. But I do know that a lot of the children enjoy sharing special things that they've done um, outside of school with their friends and classmates. So um, yes, uh, hopefully on the rotor, it's nice and clear as to which week your child is going to be able to do their show and tell. And that happens on a Friday afternoon um, each week. So yeah, once they've put their water bottles away, they are then in the classroom. And often the first, one of the first things the children like to do is have a look at the map of the day, which is on the board um, at the front by my desk. Uh, that just sets out the, the types of learning activities that we will be doing during the day. Um, so we might have some quite academic subjects to learn about, um, maybe some practical subjects, as well as a mixture of discovery time, which the children are used to having from their time in reception. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So once they've checked sort of the map of the day and roughly what's happening, um, they then go and sit in, in a place um, at the table. And on this slide, we've got lots of photos that basically show you the layout of the classroom so as you can see we've got several sort of tables set up um, most of them have um, six to eight children sitting around them and um, the, ch the children each have a, a place a home place at the table where they sit when they first come in in the morning and also for our getting ready um, go to go home routine in the afternoon and the reason why they have those is just so that um, they know where to sit it sometimes provides them um, with a little bit of reassurance when they're first coming in they know they always go to the same seat and there will always be an activity ready for them to get on with and then in the afternoon just to make sure that they know they're always going to put their stuff in the same place and hopefully it helps to avoid things getting lost um, you can also see though in our classroom we've got a lovely big carpet area and a lot of our learning um, often starts with a whole class session on the carpet um, with us discussing and looking maybe at some things on the whiteboard or talking together and doing some practical stuff before we then go off um, to do our learning. And um, yeah, when we're doing our learning, sometimes the children will be working at a table with an adult in a focus group. Other times it's up to them to choose where they would like to do their learning. Um, and that may be in, on the carpet area. It may be at a, a different table from their home place or it may be in our outside area so children have a variety of spaces to do their learning um, throughout the day um, and then let's see what's up next oh yeah so what are we learning about um, so it links in quite nicely to that so this term um, we have an overarching um, learning theme each half term and the first one is weather wizardry uh, where we learn all about um, the seasons and weather around the world and um, obviously that's a science and geography um, driven um, learning theme um, which at the moment the weather's quite changeable so there's lots for us to learn about and talk about with that which is quite useful um, and then then after half term we go into a history driven um, learning theme toy story where we learn about um, toys um, in the past and toys now and, and think about how they're the same and how they're different um, also just to, to sort of point you in line with a couple of other documents um, the curriculum, curriculum newsletter should be going out alongside this video um, and in that gives you lots of information about routines um, so our PE routines just so you know it there on a Tuesday and a Wednesday we have a PE slot um, but it's really useful for the children to keep their PE kits in school for the whole week um, if possible. Um, home learning it goes into as well usually I set that on a Friday to be handed in the following Wednesday um, and also it talks about the reading routines and I'll come back to that a bit later when I'm talking about phonics because it sort of links together. Um, also there's some information in the curriculum 
children newsletter about things you can do to support your child's learning at home and um, it will point you in the direction of our longer term planning documents um, because they will be on our website should you wish to look in a bit more detail about the sorts of things that we're going to be learning about each term. So what else are, oh, yeah, our year one staff team. So obviously it's myself and I'm really happy this year to be working with Mrs. Walker, who is an experienced TA. Um, she has been at our school for a number of years, but she's been working up in Key Stage 2. So it's lovely uh, to have her down with us in year one this year. Um, we've also got as part of our team this year, Mrs. Smith, who the children may have told you about. And um, she is doing her teacher training this year. And so she is spending the majority majority of, of her year with, with us, um, which is great to have an additional adult and an extra pair of hands to help us all uh, with our learning as we go on. And I've also put a picture of um, Miss Akehurst up here because Miss Akehurst has the children on a Friday afternoon. Um, so she will be doing the show and tell with them and um, covering while I have my planning time. So she takes the, the children then. Um, also, the children have opportunities to work with specialist teachers. So we we're very lucky to have our sports coach Mrs Dutton who takes the children for one of their PE sessions each week and also Verity who has been doing a lot of drama and music um, she was very heavily involved in our Lion King production at the end of the summer term and she's coming to deliver um, specialist music lessons to the class which is absolutely fabulous um, as an opportunity for them this year so they are getting to work with other adults during the course of the week as well. Um, and I think what we're really keen to do in year one is to build effective partnerships with ourselves, you as parents, and of course the children, uh, to make sure that they have a really happy and successful year with us. Um, it's quite a um, it's quite a, a good year and a and a tricky year at times for the children to move from reception uh, and all the things that they've been used to down there into year two. And I know year two seems a long way away at the moment when we're only at the start of year one but actually um, we've got a, a job to do this year in helping the children to build their resilience and their independence um, to ensure that they are ready for the, for the skills that they'll need when they go into year two to continue their learning journey um, and to kind of move through that transition from reception um, up towards that so trying to help the children build those skills of independent learning, but within a very supportive and encouraging environment, that is what we want to, to try and achieve. Um, and hopefully some of our really um, nice learning themes provide lots of rich and cross-curricular um, opportunities that make meaningful links with the learning for the children so that it really starts to stick for them. And, um, yeah, um, I think over the course of the year, the children do become much more independent, um, but all of the adults are trained really well to work um, to help the children to recognise what they are good at and to recognise the areas in which they think that they need some help. Um, I sometimes say we don't want the children to come to school and feel that they are, you know, education and learning is being done to them. Uh, we really want to encourage them to take an active role role in, in their learning um, and to, to think about what they find easier, what they feel most confident with, but also the, what are the areas that they still need to work really hard on and how can we help them improve? So all of us working together as an effective partnership will hopefully uh, make for a really happy and successful year this year. Um, I mentioned earlier a bit about discovery time and was, was saying that we have a mixture during, during our timetable um, of more academic and focused learning tasks that are perhaps um, directed by uh, the teachers and adults in the room, uh, alongside the mixture of the child initiated uh, learning that they've been used to doing in reception, we call it discovery time still. Um, and so we've got lots and lots of opportunities, lots of, of different resources for the children to use in discovery time, uh, whether that's construction or jigsaws, creative things. Um, so they, they might like drawing, coloring, making things, um, junk modeling, that type of thing. Um, and also in our outside area, which I'll talk a bit more about in, in in a minute um, but a whole range of ways that the children can develop lots and lots of different valuable skills be that language skills communication skills um, collaboration um, resilience 
and just uh, grow some fine motor skills, a whole range really, the list sort of goes on. Um, but yes, it's been really nice over the last few days as I'm getting to know the children to watch the sorts of things that they choose themselves to do, um, what makes them happy and who they choose to work with. And, and that's been lovely to see. So yeah, they, the children have um, that sort of opportunity with the discovery time to make their own choices about their learning um, and who they learn with, uh, alongside those more academic um, focused tasks that we are doing with them as adults. And our outside area, we try to make quite a lot of use of that at this time of year, particularly when the weather's good. And then again, obviously in the summer term. Um, but yes, again, lots of, of different things you can see and um, the flowers on the wall here, they are chalkboards. So the children are able to practice, for example, letter and number formation on those uh, in a sort of at a large scale using chalks. Uh, lots of large construction and polydron uh, things for them to use. Uh, lots of things for them. To, to make things out of for imaginative play. Um, uh, the opportunity to do some gardening and plant things in our outside area and uh, sand and water play as well. So lots of different opportunities to have quite a varied and rich, hopefully, learning experience throughout the school day. Um, obviously, as the term and then the year goes on, um, we're moving away from as much discovery time um, to build up the children's stamina, really, for, for the more sort of um, structured learning where everybody is doing the academic learning at the same time. But particularly this, uh, this term, as we, we try to create as smooth a transition as possible from year R, we're making use of a lot of the, the discovery time in the indoor and outside area um, to help the children. Uh, then at the end of the school day, obviously going home time, and um, I, I think a lot of you now are familiar with our going home routine. Uh, we go out of our classroom door, um, across the year our outside area, and through the gate that the children are used to walking out through uh, from when they were in year our last year. So that's sort of at the end of the school day. Um, within the classroom, we have lots of um, different things that help the children with their learning and help to support them with that. So around the classroom are displays. We have a lot of working walls, particularly for maths and for literacy. Um, and you can see at the moment in this picture, the maths working wall hasn't got anything on it. But as we really get into the topic that we're doing at the moment, which is all about place value, we will add things that will help the children um, to retain their understanding we might put up things that they themselves have done uh, that they think are important for them to remember. And it's just filling the wall with things that are useful to help support the children's learning in whatever it is they're doing. You can also see um, in the middle display here, we have um, a Hamilton's hat display, and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail now. Um, this was the, some learning that we did when the children came up on the um, transition day in the summer term, and we shared the book of Hamilton's hats um, together uh, and really enjoyed the story, and the children designed a hat themselves that they would like Hamilton to wear, so they thought about their colours um, and thought about what style of hat they would like. So it's really nice to celebrate the children's work and they've enjoyed coming in this uh, this week and seeing their, their work up on display already which is nice this display will soon be changed and will become our literacy or writing working wall and then we'll have our theme display on on another wall um, in the classroom um, over by our sink and that will be put up soon too um, there are lots of things that specifically help the children with maths in the classroom. So we have um, number formation for maths is something that a lot of the children struggle with as they're learning their numbers. They're you know, really good at counting, uh, really good at understanding the, the early number system, but actually writing those numbers down and forming them can be tricky. So we have a board that helps us with our formation, reminds us which way around um, our numbers go. Also, as you can see, we've got a number square there. Um, and and uh, number bonds to 10 are up there um, as well. And then um, the photo on the bottom right is of our multiples display. And what we're really focusing on in year one is multiples of two, five, and 10. Now for some of the children, it won't be until the summer term that they really kind of get to grips with, with counting and those patterns, but other children already are really starting to see patterns and are enjoying counting in multiples of two. Um, so again, it's there for them to have a look at and just become familiar with um, so that they are able to use those at their own pace when they're ready 
And that links on to then in year two, the children learning their formal times tables um, and in particular focusing on the twos, fives and tens. Um, if we then go on and think about the literacy side of things um, in the classroom, we have an awful lot of things that are helping children with their phonics. And um, I know that you'll be familiar with the fact that we have, um, we're just starting up a new phonics scheme at the moment, which is exciting. Um, and also hand in hand with that goes our reading. So what's really nice is we've, we've revamped all of our classroom displays to link in and reflect our, our current phonics scheme. Um, so we have the alphabet um, that's up around the classroom uh, to help the children again with their letter formation um, and we also have lots of digraph and trigraph cards up um, with uh, helpful picture cues to remind the children of what different sound or what different graphemes um, which sounds different graphemes make I should say um, and as we go through our weekly phonics sessions in year one we tend to focus on one particular sound for a whole week so this week our first week we've been looking at where a y makes the a sound um, and so on our phonics fun board, we try over the course of the week to come up with words that have that A sound spelt A Y. And so that's on our phonics fun, fun board and is there for the children to use, um, you know, to support them with their learning as they go. And then um, just getting quite close to the end of my presentation now, um, but I just wanted to share this final slide with you because um, really in a nutshell, this is what we're wanting to, to do um, over the course of this year is um, really think about our school values of aspire, respect and enjoy. And later this week, the children will all be designing a leaf to go on our um, aspire, respect, enjoy tree um, to show their commitment to um, really trying to show our school values in their everyday life and um, yeah I think this kind of underpins everything that we do at Jesse Young Husband School and in year one as well I'm just going to take off the screen share now uh, so you can see me again let's have a look uh, hopefully I'm back now um, but yeah aspire respect and enjoy and I think just to sort of summarize at the end of, of, of this video what I really hope this year is that all of us can aspire um, to do our very best and to to learn with each other and from each other whether that's adults in school your children and you as parents um, and that we can work together um, be really respectful to each other and help the children to learn how to show respect I have to say they're doing a fantastic job already, which is brilliant. Um, and also that we can have a really enjoyable year that actually by working together and showing respect and aspiring to do our best, we will have a really enjoyable time at school um, and the children hopefully will be happy and successful. So I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And if I haven't met you properly yet, I do hope I'll get the chance over the coming days and weeks and really look forward to getting to know your children more more as, as time goes on and to working with you over the course of this year. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.